And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church. For some of you, it might be the second time you've been here today. If that's the case, welcome back. Uh, for those of you who have not been here already today, welcome. We're glad that you're here. And uh, we're glad to, uh, to come along and to listen to uh, our new friend here at Memorial, Ken Miedema, um, who has been with us all weekend and has been leading us in a workshop yesterday, leading, uh, helping to lead our worship this morning, pulling together a 40-person choir um, who sang at our worship service this morning and did uh, a fantastic job. And we'll hear more from him in just a few minutes. In case you're wondering who's that big guy with the funny accent who just started talking, my name is Charlie, and I'm the senior pastor here at Memorial. And like I say, we're very glad that you're here this afternoon. I want to say a couple of things just before Ken starts for us. The first is to say, uh, we're going to take up an offering today, all right? Uh, it's in a sanctuary. You can never miss up an opportunity to take an offering. <laughs> Some people have been asking, what is that offering for? And that's going to be for our general missions fund here at Memorial. Let me tell you a little bit about that. When we invite people at this church to give to our missions work, we invite them to give to a general missions fund through which we partner with multiple local and international organizations. Locally, you might know Barnabas, you might know the Coalition for the Homeless, you might know Hope House or Gracie's Kitchen. We partner with them and from our general missions funds, we make two disbursements each year to our partner organizations. We also work with Ports de Soliman in Guatemala. Uh, we run an annual mission trip there and we also uh, make a dis uh, dis a disbursement of those funds today as well. We work with Kenya Partners. So we have multiple partners that we work with here, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, the Florida United Methodist Children's Home. And so what I'm trying to say to you is, if you give generously today, it's going to help out a number of different organizations. And, uh, and if you want to give, there's three ways you can do that. You can give by cash, of course. Uh, you can write a check, and if you do that, make it out to Memorial United Methodist Church and Market General Missions, okay? Also, the other way, if you forgot your checkbook or your cash, but you've got your plastic, there's good news, we've got you covered, okay? And at the back of the church, on the way out the door, we have what's called a dip jar. And in a dip jar, you simply, it does exactly what it says on the tin. You, you, you dip it in, you dip your card in, you take it out, and it's set for a $25 donation. We cannot change that number easily, so that's why it's set at one denomination. So if you prefer to give that way, we can do that. All of those proceeds, like I say, are dispersed through the year. So please give generously towards that. At the end of our concert today, uh, you might want to greet Ken and say hello to him. He's not going to make his way to either door. He's just going to stay right here uh, by the piano. So if you want to do that, please come along, say hello. Uh, and also, I'm going to give him a plug. He's brought a few CDs here. And uh, if you'd like to purchase one, uh, you're, you'll be able to do that at, that at that time at the end of today. Have I remembered everything? I'm looking at Joan, I'm looking at Marilyn. Is there anything I forgot? No? Thank you, Beth. All right, I'm going to hand it over to you. Now, you better be prepared because uh, at, when the time comes, uh, you, you announced the offering already, but there's a, uh, uh, I have a time in the show All right. for you to announce the offering, and you better be prepared to say something because I spent the whole afternoon working out a very special introduction for you. You know what? I so, will be ready. So you don't want to miss that introduction. <laughs> When my days grow tedious and my nights grow cold, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing. When my mind grows weary and my body grows old, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing. I will sing, I will sing Like a bird upon the wing I will keep on singing Till my story is told I will sing hallelujah I will sing When the road gets rugged and I'm far from home I will sing hallelujah I will sing When I look for the answers And they will not come I will sing hallelujah I will sing 
I will sing, I will sing until winter turns to spring. I will keep on singing in the darkness and the gloom. I will sing, hallelujah, I will In the days of danger and the time of war, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing. When the sky breaks open and the hate guns roar, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing. I will sing I Until death has lost its sting, I will keep on singing till we fight no more. I will sing, hallelujah, I will sing. song said my mama long ago when you walk in the bright morning sun make up a song to the thirst in my soul when you listen to the grand river run make up a song when you mess up somehow and you can't change the harm you have done make up a song well put it all out there and sing When you're 13 years old and you've just met the girl of your dreams Make up a song when your teenage daughter is falling apart at the seams Make up a song when you watch politicians raping the poor with their schemes Make up a song and hey, put it all out there and sing out loud when you're laughing Sing through your tears when you're crying Sing on the ground when you're crawling Sing in the sky when you're flying Sing in the days of your living Make up a song for the night of your dying Make up a song oh, Put it all out there and sing Until strangers turn to friends From birth until death With every last breath But the music never ends Let the song go on and on To the night until the dawn Sing your joys and your tears And your hopes and your fears Let the song go on and on and on and on
up a song for the friends and companions who are standing right here by your side. Make up a song as the audience waits to be taken on a musical ride. Make up a song, put it all out there and Never end until strangers turn to friends. From birth until death, and with every last breath. But the music never end. But the songs go on and on. From birth until the dawn. Sing your joys and your tears and your hopes and your fears. Let the song go on and then on and on. Let the song go on and on and on. Let the song go on and on and on. Let the song go on and on and on. Sing, sing. Sing, sing. Sing. I always believe is about a concert, if I have to work, you have to work a little bit too. <laughs> so we're going to do a little uh, a sing-along song that has very, very, very simple words. Let me show you uh, how it goes. It goes something like this. Bound together and finally woven, we're bound together and finally woven, we're bound together and finally woven with love. Simple words, right? I'll sing it again. Bound together and finally woven, we're bound together and finally woven, we're bound together and finally woven with love. Good! Now you always sing better if you stand up. So if you don't mind, one, two, here we go. Bound together and finally woven with. Bound together and finally woven with. Bound together and finally woven with. Oh yeah, let me hear the hands. Here we go. Bound together and finally woven with. Bound together and finally woven with. Bound Music echo in the night. Oh, we are bound together and finally woven with. Bound together and finally woven with. Bound together and finally woven with love. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. One thing I forgot to tell you. The, uh, the next verse of the song was originally written to accompany what I call the Great Declaration. Now what I mean by that is, in a minute, you are gonna move around this room to as many people as you can find, and you're going to declare to them, you are the light of the world. That's what you're gonna say. You're gonna go to people and say, you are the light of the world. They'll be really glad to hear it, okay. One, two, here you go! Bound together and finally woven with Bound together and Oh, 
together and finally woven with Come together and finally woven with love. Oh, oh, um, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, you're doing really well. But there's a second half <laughs> of the great declaration. Can you imagine what it is? I said, you are the light of the world. What's the next part? You are the salt of the earth. One, two, rock on, people! Come together and find the woven with. Come together and find the woven with. Come together and find the woven with. Sing out the dance! In the city streets. Sing out the dance. Make the night go sweeter. spending a lot of time this weekend um, thinking about relationships and about being a part of a group. Um, and Dr. Willeman told us over and over again that we don't, we don't do this, this Christian thing alone. We are part of a group. So I want to do a song for anyone who just happens to be committed to a relationship of any kind. Um, I Two friends in high school. <laughs> I was the only blind kid in my school, kind of fat, baby face, kind of, kind of ugly. <laughs> a classic musician. Not a way to win friends and influence people, but I did have a couple of friends. Uh, one was called um, Jerry, and he had the lowest bass voice in the world, but he was, his, he was not the most intelligent uh, critter in the, in, the, in the school. His conversations were kind of monosyllabic. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> My other friend was Walter. He was the only boy soprano in the school, so go figure. Anyway, I, they were my friends, and they stuck with me through thick and thin. And this song is dedicated to them and to all of you who dare to take the risk of engaging in a committed relationship anywhere. in the sun with you I will stand in the rain I will be with you when you wonder why wonder why I'll be glad when you are glad I'll be there in your pain I will be with you when it's time to cry Some friendships flash like a rocket and then they fade away Some friendships last for an hour and some for just a day I don't know how to name this friendship and I won't even try all I know is you need this connection, and so do I. So do I. Cause we are bound together like sky and morning, like sound and music, like flowers and rain. 
Down the years on the thousand highways we'll find each other time and time again. my secret name, one that nobody else will ever know. I will hold your hand when you feel alone, yes I will. I will follow the path of our friendship everywhere it goes. I will learn when to leave you on your sparkle like diamonds, then they turn to dust. Some people just keep trying hard, but they never do learn to trust. I don't know what to say to you sometimes. I don't know what to do. All I know is I need this connection that so do you. time during the weekend is the idea that we uh, work with and spend time with and collaborate with people who are not like us, <laughs> whom, whom we may not even particularly like or enjoy or find a way to cope with. So uh, a, a couple of stories about that. One of them is a story about my friend Mel. Mel was a, um, Mel was a, a professor uh, actually at a seminary in California uh, he had just received his doctorate. He was on his, his first day of being a teacher. Mel is an introvert. He's kind of a, kind of a loner, really. Uh, so uh, it's, it's Monday morning. Mel is in his office preparing his lesson plan. And there's a 10 o'clock coffee break. And so the, a knock on Mel's door. He answers the door, and it's Jim, the professor across the hall. Hey, Mel, I'm Jim, the professor across the hall. I wonder if you'd like a cup of coffee. My friend Mel says, well, you know, I'm kind of preparing my lesson plans and, um, you know, I'm kind of a little bit of an uh, introvert there and um, maybe some other day. So Jim leaves, Mel keeps working. Tuesday morning, come along. 10 o'clock, coffee break. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Hey, it's Jim from across the hall. Can we do a coffee today? Uh, well, I have some phone calls I have to make and uh, I think it'll take most of the break time. So maybe tomorrow. So Wednesday morning comes along, Thursday morning comes along, Friday morning, three long weeks. He is, if nothing else, persistent. And finally, Mel says, I'll give you 10 minutes. So they go to the little uh, 
coffee shop. And they sit down. And seven hours later, <laughs> the students have all been, is that your prof in there? Yep. Well, that's my prof in there too. Well, if they're not going to class, I'm sure not going to class. <laughs> so these two professors skipped all their classes and formed a friendship that was one of the, well, when, when Jim from across the hall was on his deathbed with cancer a year later, Mel came up and said, Jim, if you, if you, had, if you had not been knocking and nagging, knocking and nagging, knocking and nagging, I would have missed the best friendship I ever had. So people, keep knocking and nagging. This is called Puppy Time. Strikes ten, it's coffee time again. While the world is rushing to its judgment day, judgment day. Well, we'll take a little time, and we'll try to find the rhyme. And if it gets too hard, we'll laugh the time away. But the pace can make you dizzy And your heart attack is dusty Round the bend, round the bend Leave it all behind you Cause the craziness can blind you And besides all that I sure do need a friend And there'll be time enough to fight the windmills and all the battles that never seem to end. So from now till quarter after, it's a cup of love and laughter. So come on, old friend, it's coffee time again. Till twenty after, or from now till thirty after, forty after, fifty after, or from now till ever after. It's a cup of love and laughter. So come on, old friend, it's coffee time again. story about two outsiders who found each other. Um, when I was growing up, I grew up in a very, very ultra-conservative religious environment in Grand Rapids, Michigan, in the Dutch Reformed Church. And I never learned to dance. In fact, we didn't dance in my childhood. A lot of things we didn't do. We didn't watch TV on Sunday. We didn't go out to eat on Sunday. Um, we didn't go to movies. Uh, my, my private high school didn't even have a prom. We had a, check this out, a banquet in the church basement. 
how exciting is that to bring your girlfriend to? So, so I never learned to dance. So fast forward a number of years, it's now 1976. Um, I've been in my career for about four years now, and I'm invited to a very um, prestigious Presbyterian church in a neighboring state. I won't name it, because some of you may have friends there. <laughs> we'll just refer to it as the Frigidaire Presbyterian Church. <laughs> and I was there for what they called Missions Sunday. This is where they raise quadrillions of dollars for missions. And so it's the biggest day of the year. It's bigger than Easter and Christmas combined. And being a, a, being a very classical sort of church, I decided I had to write something classical to sing. And so here is what I intended to sing on that Sunday morning. Let all the music ring. Let all the people sing. From every corner of the earth, proclaim the gospel of new birth. Let all the music ring. That was what I intended to say. <laughs> Until Saturday night when I discovered that the youth group was having a party in my honor. It was going to be because they knew I had gone to high school in the 50s and 60s. They decided to make it a sock hop. <laughs> and they brought in a jukebox right out of 1959 with all of my favorite songs. I had a girl. Donna was her name. She be do wah Since she left me, I've never been the same. Or maybe dream. Help me dream, dream when I want you, ready when I want you in the night. If I need you at night to hold me tight, to hold me tight, but never I want you, all I have to do is dream. Let's get right to the good part. I can make you mine. Taste your lips of wine. Great juice for the Baptists among us, okay? <laughs> I can make you mine. Take your lips of great juice and time. Only trouble is, she was dreaming my life the way I want you so. I want you so that I can die. That I can, I want you so, I want you, and that is why. And that is why, whenever I want you, all I have to do is dream. My favorite song in high school, and the one that most accurately described my love life. Since my baby left me, I found a new place as well. And I'm in the hill on lonely street call. Well, baby, you'll be so lonely, baby. You'll be so lonely. You'll be so lonely. You're gonna die. Okay, so here's this great, big, wonderful, wonderful party in a recreation room in a southern mansion with the jukebox going full blast. Hundred kids in the room. And I walk in and the kids are all what? Dancing. Of course they are. And I, who never learned to dance, am standing up against the wall, pretending to watch the evening go by. <laughs> See, now you guys get that joke. I did that same joke for a bunch of Lutherans recently. <laughs> So anyway, I thought, you know, since the party was in my honor, a bunch of the kids would come up and say, oh, Mr. Ken, we're so glad to have you here, na 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 right? Nobody, <laughs> except one 14-year-old girl came up to me. Now, you've got to understand, this is my best way of saying it, this was a Saks Fifth Avenue church, okay? She and her family shopped at Goodwill. Do you get it? Okay. Her dance card was always empty. She never dressed right. I don't know why she stayed. I don't know why she stayed, but she did. She was the one who came up to me and said, 
Oh, Mr. Ken, Mr. Ken, would you dance with me? <laughs> so I told the long story about not learning to dance. I told the whole story about the high school and didn't have the prom and the, and the senior banquet in the church basement. I told the whole terrible story. And then I said, but don't give up on me because now that I have a career and little money and I'm not in that same conservative upbringing anymore, I'm learning to dance and I can do one whole dance step. I can go, she said, oh, you'll dance with me then. I said, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I said, I, I can't do this. She dragged me out. I mean, literally dragged me out on the floor, kicking and screaming. Um, I, I, I stepped on her feet. I stepped on my feet. I knocked over five kids, three lamps, and one statue. But I had a wonderful time. And when I got back to my hotel room, <laughs> I could not sleep. I was in there going, well, you can knock me down, step in my face, slam them on me, all over the place, buffalo, lay hold for my loose. I was on the second floor. I don't know what the people on the first floor thought, but I was having a pretty nice time. I felt exactly like Liza Doolittle felt, remember, when she sang, I could have, help me if you know it, danced all night. I could have danced all night and still have begged for more. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand things I never done before. I never know what made it so exciting. Why all at once? My heart took flight. I only know when he began to dance with me. I could have danced, danced, danced. Oh. few moments, Joan, of the organ prelude. They heard something more like this. She asked me to dance, and I'd never tried dancing before. Minister, what is he doing up there? <laughs> I had visions of everyone laughing me right off the floor. Music director. Take his microphone away right now. <laughs> no, I protested. It just wouldn't be any good. She gently insisted. And finally, I told her I would. Well, it was unforgettable. She was a fresh breath of spring on a cold winter's day. Yes, it was unforgettable.
let me dance and I'd never tried dancing before I had visions of saints and angels laughing me right off the floor No, I protested it just wouldn't be any good I told him I would. Well, it was unforgettable. He was the coming of spring on my cold winter's day. social group, people who, people who are not couth like we are, um, and yet we are called to be one with, to join with, to be part of a group that includes, that is really hard to do. We have a song, it's a duet. My, my manager and co-worker Beverly Vandermolen, who is my sound person, is up in the sound booth today. And she's going to sing this with me. It's called Face to Face. Talk about having to relate to people who are not like me. Here's my challenge.
You know the world just might become a better place If we could see each other face In my village, when the dark comes, people huddle against the chilly night. Babies whimper, and mamas hush them. Sleep now, my hungry child, until the morning light. In my village, when the dawn breaks, fields are barren and no rain clouds cross the sky. will stand beside us and put new light in our eyes. I am waving to you now. Can you see me? I am calling out to you. Can you To know the world just might become a better place If we could see each other face to face If we could see each other face So now, well, th this is the time when we're going to, uh, again, make a note about the offering. Uh, Charlie, are we, are we going to pass plates or just, um, how are we going to do this? Uh, we're going to pass plates. Okay, I, I have this introduction. Now, I, I, I thought for a long time about how to introduce our pastor. My first thought was something like trumpet. And then I thought maybe something kind of ecclesiastical. Oh, I thought, no, Charlie's not that kind of a guy. <laughs> so what I came up with was this. In just a moment, we'll sing some more. In just a moment, we'll sing some more. In just a moment, we'll sing some more. Until that time, preach, you've got the floor. Team, 
and, uh, and I sent them a quick text. I said, what, what kind of number do we collect each year to support the work of missions in our community and beyond? So last year, the general missions fund that, that we are supporting today raised $60,000. And uh, if you add to that specific donations that were made to our mission partners, that actually takes it over $100,000. Uh, and that's a regular number that, that goes through this church, and all of that money is in this first uh, into mission program. So we're proud of that, and, uh, and we do good work here. We make a difference. I tell our church all the time, what we do when we gather makes a difference in the world around us. And so what you do today when you give makes a difference in the world around us too. And so. Uh, Marilyn and Mark are going to come forward. It'll be like a good old church offering. They're going to pass those plates. Uh, if you've got nothing to put in it, that's okay. Um, but you're more than welcome here. If you're waiting for the dip jar, that's okay too. Um, but let's give generously and make a difference in the world. So we're going to do that today, and uh, since we've been talking about being a group, being a company together, being um, a corporate entity, uh, 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 being, a, um, being a collective, and, and collectives always have troubling people in them, yeah? And so I want you to think about one time in your life when you had to work or play or uh, stand beside a person who was just not your favorite person, okay? Far from it. Um, maybe it's someone you worked with. Maybe it's a, a person you knew at, at the church. I have a couple of people. I have a, a guy uh, who uh, attached himself to me, uh, kind of a leech, really, in the early, in the early 80s, um, and was um, always wanting to or oh, drive me on a road trip, or have a long conversation. He was kind of a 
strange little fellow, and he always you know, sort of, oh, I, 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 I want us to be together, and blah, 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 blah. And he, you know, he was just, just not fun, just, just troublesome. I decided, against my better judgment, that I would befriend him. I would do the work it took. As a result, um, I was able to be there when he, when he came out to his parents. I was able to be uh, on the phone with him when he announced his marriage to his husband. Um, I was able to be there with him when recently his husband died of cancer. Um, and he is my tech now. He logs into my computer and fixes it for me. And we have a beautiful relationship that started out as, I don't know what this is going to be, but it turned out to be wonderful. Um, we all have those folks in our lives, and, 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 and I want us to tell stories along that line today because these are learning stories, aren't they? And so uh, what we're going to do, we will have a mic um, in the middle, and in a minute, you're going to go to that mic, and we're going to clap for you like you are a big star, like you're the king or queen of all storytellers, and then you'll tell that story, and I'll do my best to compose a song. So let me start with a little introduction that goes like this. Fly with me on the wings of a story. Take me to some place, some place you know. Run with me down roads you have traveled. I want to follow where you choose to go. Sail with me. Down the river of your memory, we'll sail together, cause there's so much to see. Fly with me on the wings of a story, time's all we need, my friend. Come story with me. So, who is going to be my first storyteller of the afternoon about this troubling person? You don't have to name them. <laughs> Makes it best if you don't. Uh, who's going to be storyteller number one? The mic has your name. We're ready to go. Who's going to be number one? Stand up and go to the mic. Who's going to be first storyteller? Oh, I got to here. I'm All good. Well, when I worked at the health department, I had a young lady that was my um, aide, and she was a, a smoker. And one day, she got into a coughing fit. I thought she was literally going to cough up her lung. It was awful. And I said, Julie, I can say her name because she's dead. I said, Julie, you have got to quit smoking. And I said it about like that, and I heard her feelings, and she walked off. And I realized what I had done, and I went back to her and I hugged her. And after that, she was my closest companion uh, at work. But the smoking had already done its damage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what you've got to do I'm gonna tell you how you've got to behave I'm gonna tell you what you've got to do And don't you know the situation's grave I'm gonna tell you, lay the law before you I'm gonna tell you how the cow ate the cabbage I'm gonna tell you what you need to do to be all tell you tonight I'm gonna tell you what you've got to do I'm gonna tell you cause you really need to know I'll tell you how you've got to behave I'm gonna tell you 
where your mind's gotta go. I'm gonna tell you, cause it's important. And I've got it on my mind. Sure enough, the minute I tell you, you're gonna walk off and leave me behind. Leave me behind. Then I realize just what I've done. And I know I gotta change my way. So I come to you. And so I hug you. And I hold you right here today. Sorry, Julie. Sorry I said it quite that way. But you know how much it matters to me. You know how much it matters today. Just for this moment, let me hold you. Just for this moment, let me hug you. Just for this moment, let me hold you in my arms. Become my best friend up until the very end. You'll become my bestest friend right up to the very end. I will hold you. Yeah. Who's my next one? Okay, all right. Um, we are from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and for many years we owned a bed and breakfast there. And we would go out for lunch because I was tired of cooking breakfast and didn't <laughs> want to make lunch. And we had a wonderful sandwich shop in town, the best sandwiches, but the owner was frightening. And people in town called him a sandwich Nazi. And when Charlie and I would go in, there was a big board on the wall with all the ingredients, and you had to pick what you wanted on your sandwich. And so I took my husband down there, and I said, now, look at the board and order quickly. Don't make him mad. Because he would sit there with a pencil like this while you were trying to order it. It would just terrify me. So after probably a few months of going in there almost every day, we started to talk to him, and then we would go in later. He closed at 3, so we would go in about 2.45 and order our sandwich, and he would close, and we'd sit in the window and eat our sandwich and, and just talk to him. He was a very, very smart, um, acerbic sort of person, but very, very smart and funny. I don't think anybody knew how funny he was, and we actually became great friends, but people would... Try to, they'd see us in the window, try to get in, you know, see it, and they would think it was open. And he'd yell, go away, <laughs> to the people trying to get in. But he, it was, we are still friends. It was a wonderful, wonderful person. You are chalk scraping on the blackboard. You are tires squealing on the road. You are the most cantankerous man I've known. You are a scary dude. You alienate everyone. You scare me half out of my wits. You are the most troublesome guy I know, and so we are gonna make friends with you. It takes a while, but sooner or later, I believe we're gonna see You're a man who's just as vulnerable As Joe and Jeannie, John and Jimmy and me You may be a cervic on the outside 
I have seen you on the inside. You may think you're tearing us apart, but I've seen what's in your heart of hearts. You're a real guy. You're a smart guy, and you got a sense of humor that won't quit. We'll come around every day just to hear you say those clever things you say and know your wit. Don't let us be fools. You're not the roaring lion that you seem to be. Don't let us be fools. You're someone who's gotten to the heart of me. You are chalk upon the blackboard. You are scraping on concrete. You are a troublesome man. But I love you with all of my heart. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's have another story. Let's have another story. Two more, two more stories. Who's gonna be next? All right, all right, all right. I get together with a group of men every year we're all ministers or slash music ministers, and we've been getting together for about 25 years. We gather up in the mountains of North Carolina. We come from varying backgrounds, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Methodist, Catholic, Southern Baptist. And there are times when we fight like cats and dogs up there. We get together for a week and um, we lay it all out on the line. And we like to say, uh, whatever happens on the mountain stays on the mountain. And sometimes it's pretty ruthless because this is like a support group uh, on acid. Um, they really, we will really go at each other and sometimes almost to the point of being physical. That, that's happened a couple of times. And yet, we love each other with this deep love that I can't explain. Uh, but we've been, like I said, we've been together for 25 years. There's only 10 of us now. There were 12 and two have gone on. But it's amazing how these guys can come from varying backgrounds and attitudes and uh, can just fight each other all day long on Monday. And yet by Wednesday or Thursday, we're crying because we're going through something that's difficult. We're just showing love to one another. And it's, uh, it's a group that means a lot to me. And oddly enough, the name of the group is the Dead Preacher Society. <laughs> Oh, 
coming round the mountain, we'll be coming round the mountain, we'll be coming round the mountain, we'll be coming. We'll be wearing battle scars when we come. We'll be wearing battle scars when we come. We'll be wearing battle scars, we'll be wearing battle scars, we'll be wearing battle scars when we come. grandfather who was a the last of the, uh, the Bedford Whalers in Massachusetts. He came from an alcoholic family, both his mother and father, and at 10 years old they would take him down to the docks and he'd get on the whaling ships. He was a big boy so he got away with being 14. He traveled all over the world. He went to the Galapagos Islands and had wonderful stories to tell. But the one thing that I remember the most is throughout his life, he never blamed his parents. He never used anybody and made excuses for where he was in life and always had a smile. And I thought, he never whined, never complained. And I was very proud of my grandfather. <laughs> Sometimes when I think of your example Look at my own life And I almost start to cry I have a thousand light years From living like you lived And I can't imagine how or why 
Send them to the CD table so they'll buy the merch. <laughs> We're not going to do that. We're going to violate the rules. I have one last song to sing. I, I must tell you, I, on behalf of Beverly Vandermolen, my wonderful manager and sound person and logistics person and booking agent and traveling companion and <laughs> boss of my life, um, and myself, we, we've had such a wonderful, wonderful weekend here. Uh, we would love to come back sometime. It has been a delightful weekend of blessing and renewing and hope giving and life giving. You all are some of the finest people we've met anywhere. And I know, I know that Florida has a lot of issues that some of you in this room are feeling pretty depressed about. And I know that those things are troublesome, and I know that it's hard to speak out. It's hard to speak your truth to power. It's hard to speak out against things like book banning and things like that, but you need to. You are some of the finest people anywhere, and you need to speak out for freedom. Um, and I just, I, I just want to thank you for a wonderful time. One last song. This is, this is a song about you. It's called The Song is Alive. Oh, and just before we do that, I want to tell you two things. There will be some CDs here. I want to tell you about Interlude, because Interlude is a partial sponsor of my being here this weekend. Um, Interlude is a nonprofit. Um, it organizes retreats 
or church musicians in their mid-career, church musicians who are often burned out and frustrated and overworked and underpaid. <laughs> A few of you in this room know that scene. Um, and we do three-day retreats that are free. And we, are, our, our, our whole purpose is to say to musicians, thank you for the hard work that you do. Thank you for the love that you share. And to give them a chance to unburden themselves, to rest, renew, reimagine. We bring in a wonderful counselor. Um, they're, they're beautiful retreats. And we can tell you more about that. Interlude also sends me to small churches that have no money or to places that um, are limited uh, financially. The latest project is we're doing a um, something that sort of resembles a church service, but not quite, with actors and artists and musicians and dancers and producers in New York City on Broadway. These, many of these are people who grew up in a faith environment and have left it for one reason or another. Uh, many of them can't get to church on Sunday morning because they work late Saturday night and they have matinees on Sunday afternoon. Um, Broadway is dark on Monday night. We have now about 30 or 40 people who gather to love on each other, sometimes to perform for each other, sometimes to have long conversations about things that matter. Last time we talked about changes in our lives, changing seasons, and people wept because their lives are in such transition and we held each other and we committed ourselves to relationships to each other. We have um, well-known composers, we have television producers, and we have young fledgling actors who are doing their first auditions, hanging out with each other, loving on each other. Uh, recently, a lawyer friend of ours uh, said, how much is it going to cost for you to go to, to New York every month, and what would the salary be that you'll be losing by doing that? We told him, and he wrote a check. Um, we have been given a Broadway theater to have our event in every month. Um, so uh, there's some holy work going on with our little nonprofit called Interlude. Uh, so if you're interested in finding out more, uh, we can certainly talk about that. Now, the song about you, it's called The Song is Alive. Back home. Oh, 
A song in the road that leads back home And you are the ones who get to raise the sign Who get to light the night Who get to lift the shades Who get to tend the soil Who get to give the pitch But the song is alive everywhere Go my friends and God defend And the courage send you. May she ever stand beside you in her loving kindness, hide you through the treacherous darkness, guide you. And welcome, stranger. Nice base. Be the shelter in the danger. You are light, the night confounding. You are love. The world surrounding in your souls, God's song is sounding. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.